You've heard somebody say it in your life. I need to lose some weight. I've just gained too much this holiday season. Or I've really let myself go. Mercy me. There's a lot of reasons why people want to lose weight, but very few understand exactly what's happening when they lose weight. And to be fair, it's fairly complex, so we'll try to break that down for you. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Waste Time we ask the question, how does exercise burn fat? So first off, this isn't to say that anyone should, needs to, can, must, or maybe could lose some weight. That's really between you, the you that's in a mirror, and your doctor in some cases. How you lead your life is personal, and that's not what we want to talk about here. However, in order to understand how exercise burns fat, you need to learn how your body uses fat. So let's talk about calories. A calorie, believe it or not, is actually a unit of measurement which they use to keep track of energy, typically heat energy, specifically the amount needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water a single degree Celsius. You likely see that number if you ever look at nutrition information and think, wow, that little, huh? <laughs> How great. And then you look at the number of servings and you're like, wait, this is that many servings? This is, this is not big enough for me to eat in that way. Hmm. This is definitely one plate full of food, not six. But anyway, the way your body works, you need 2,000 calories every single day to continue to operate at the same level of functioning that you are currently. So every day, you need to consume 2,000 calories, and that sounds like a lot, but it's not really. If you've ever actually looked at the calorie content of most meals, they don't really stick to that. But just to be entirely clear, it's not always 2,000 calories for every single person, but it's probably around there. But here's something that's pretty interesting if you think about it. About 70% of that 2,000 calories goes to the various processes that keep you alive. For instance, your kidneys. You really, really need your kidneys. They're a vital part in how you keep your body pure of toxins. Same goes for the liver, and really, if you want to talk about it, you need your heart pretty bad too, don't you? Well, that takes energy to use. So roughly around 1,400 to 1,500 calories daily go just into that, just into being alive, just standing around, sitting around, clicking things on your computer, sleeping, eating more food. That stuff takes up 70% of the energy that you bring in. Now, process that energy, that is to say digestion, takes another 10% of your energy. So we've accounted for 80% of that energy. 80% of the 2,000 calories you bring in on a daily basis goes to life processes and breaking down your food. In the process of breaking down your food, your body will often find that you've brought in more than 2,000 calories daily. That is to say, like I said, meals don't always encourage you to eat just the amount necessary to live. They're often above 2,000 thousand calories if you eat three meals a day because they kind of don't care about how many calories are in food. They care about you buying food and, well, they kind of do things to direct you away from thinking about that sort of stuff. They like the money, they don't really like the thinking. And keeping track of calories and the food that they're putting out is more along the lines of the thinking than it is the getting of the money. So here's what happens with calories. The energy that you consume when you eat food is processed by your liver into either sugar or fat. Sugar is what's actually burned. And when I say sugar, I don't mean sugar exactly. I don't mean powdered sugar or sugar cane or granulated sugar or anything like that. I actually mean glycogen, which is a polysaccharide of glucose that animals, fungi, and human beings use to store energy. It's short-term storage, though, because it burns well. Now, fat doesn't burn well, and that's why fat is long-term storage. As you're burning glycogen, you're gradually depleting a short-term fuel supply. If you're performing a physical activity, such as exercise or moving a bunch of stuff that you need in the basement because there's too much stuff in the damn living room, if you feel like you've sort of hit the wall, so to speak, it's because you've run out of glycogen. Your body is now running on fat, the energy that it has stored, but it doesn't burn well, like I said. It's energy that can, well, make you feel energetic at a much slower rate to where you don't necessarily actually feel energetic. This is why your liver does what it does. If your liver isn't livering, you're not going to have glycogen or fat. And the liver also has the capability of going back and forth between the two. It can take glycogen, turn it into fat, take fat, turn it into glycogen. And this is absolutely imperative because when you're running on sugar, you obviously feel a lot better. You feel like you're running on energy as opposed to kind of limping along. 
It's why you only put gasoline into a gasoline car. You don't put, like, lighter fluid into it and expect it to work like it's supposed to. I have no idea what would happen if you did that, but I'd be willing to bet it's not work how it's supposed to. And here's the other thing, your body only uses 20% of its energy on physical activity, so even if you did a lot of physical activity, it wouldn't necessarily even get to the point of burning fat. And your daily food intake is somewhere relevant to your body weight and activity level. In fact, you're very rarely actually burning fat at all. The majority of the time you're exercising, you're just going through the amount of food that you had in that day anyhow. If you didn't wear yourself out and then keep going despite that, you probably haven't actually burnt any fat specifically. This is why people diet. If people don't bring in enough calories, then their liver has to convert fat over to glycogen in order to burn as fuel for the daily activities. This obviously takes energy as well, so I mean it's gotta come from somewhere and if it's not your food, it's your fat. So that's a very good reason why to be careful when you're dieting. It's much easier to crash on account you don't have as much glycogen. There are some people who say you should never diet no matter what and that exercise is how you're going to lose weight, but frankly if your doctor has said you need to lose weight, this is bad for your heart, which like I said is a very individualized personal thing that I have absolutely no way of saying is a situation you may be experiencing, but usually diet works a lot better than just exercise. You really have to exercise a lot. I mean, exercising and maintaining a healthy diet is obviously the best way to go because it's not just about losing weight, it's also about finding a healthy medium. But again, I'm not here to tell you your business. If you found this interesting or informative, don't forget to click that like button and if you want to see more, make sure you hit subscribe. We upload new waste time videos all the time and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this one. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero and we'll see you next time right here on Waste Time.